Hi everybody, welcome to a Christmassy episode of Behind the Wheel. My name is Tom Luckin and I'm the Marketing Assistant at OSV. On this week's Behind the Wheel, we talk about a brand new five model Mazda 2 range. We all love the smell of a new car, but is it actually a good thing? Lucasfilm have unveiled a new Starfighter and we give you a car countdown for 2019. As always, we're gonna reveal the person who correctly guessed the car we were sitting in last week and be sure to guess the car we're sitting in this week. With the aim to reduce CO2 emissions even further and have the added bonus of improving fuel economy, Suzuki has unveiled a brand new hybrid powertrain which will be added to their range of models next year. The new 48 volt self-charging hybrid powertrain will be introduced across their Swift Sport, Vitara and S-Cross models. One big advantage of this new powertrain is the reduction in CO2 emissions, over 20% lower than previous models. The new range is set to launch in the UK in March 2020. We have some exciting news that will surely delight Mazda fans. The Mazda 2 has finally arrived. The 2025 model lineup is now available in the UK. It has a more sophisticated exterior than its predecessor and comes with new technology and a streamlined and upgraded interior. It has a new grille with mesh patterning, similar to the style on the new Mazda 3 hatchback, a wider signature wing, revised headlights, and overall a much sportier appearance. The interior comes with new, more supportive front seats and the comfort of everyone travelling in the vehicle has been considered. The manual transmission vehicles all benefit from mild hybridisation thanks to the introduction of Mazda M Hybrid, a self-generating powertrain. Vauxhall have added a Grandland X Hybrid to their range and it's available to order now. It's going to come to the UK in April 2020. The electric motor is excellent for low to medium speeds, while the 1.6 litre turbocharged direct injection four-cylinder petrol engine is great for medium to high speeds. The CO2 emissions have also reduced and are now 35 grams per kilometre, which is much lower than the majority of SUVs. You also have the option of switching to complete electric in zero emission or low emission zones, such as cities. Now it's time for some tech news. What does the future look like when it comes to car interiors? Earlier this year, we showed you what Jaguar Land Rover is working on using wearable tech to redesign the cockpit of their concept models. Now the design boss at Audi has revealed what he believes things will look like in the future. He believes that volume buttons will be a thing of the past and that augmented reality heads up displays will be the way that things progress. Audi has been moving towards futuristic vehicle interiors for a while, getting rid of all the buttons to make everything sleeker and smoother. Mark Licht, the design boss for Audi, said the next generation of MMI touch response technology, their current system, will be more progressive, though at the moment few details are being revealed. So we guess it's a case of keeping your head up and seeing. So what do you think? Do you think this is going too far? Do you like knobs and buttons on your dashboard? Let us know down in the comments. A few weeks ago we were talking about a new European directive to be put in place in 2022 which would mean all new cars would have to be fitted with breathalyzer technology. On our Facebook page this wasn't a very good idea, however according to a survey carried out by Motorpoint, over 70% of the motorists asked say that this was a very good idea. In the survey that OSV conducted, 54% felt that it would not be practical and would not help in preventing drink driving, while 46% felt that it would help and reduce alcohol related accidents causing injuries and fatalities. Apparently everyone loves that new car smell, but did you actually know that it could be poisonous? It smells clean, it smells new, but do you know what it actually is? According to specialists at Emissions Analytics, a British company that measures volatile organic compounds, it can actually be rather harmful. Looking at the breakdown provided by Emissions Analytics could be considered something of a mini horror story. Substances such as formaldehyde, benzene, ethyl benzene and tetrodecane can be found in the analysed VOCs all of which are irritants, some are considered carcinogens, and none of them are great for the health. Of course, they are in small amounts, and unsurprisingly, Emissions Analytics is calling for more testing and calling for a new regulation to be put in place to reduce detrimental health exposure. The build-up is worse when the car is left sitting in high heat for a long period of time, so a hot summer's day, for example. Armed with this knowledge, will you be opening the doors and letting your new car air out?
Unless you're not interested in fantasy films or you've been living under a rock for the past 40 years, you'll definitely know what Star Wars is. You're probably asking right now what Star Wars has to do with cars, and that's completely fair. Well, Lucasfilm entered into an interesting partnership earlier this year. No, not with Disney, that's already a given. This time it was with Porsche. So what were the filmmakers and the sports car company designing? A Starfighter, of course. The Starfighter will be unveiled at the premiere of the last in the latest Star Wars trilogy, The Rise of Skywalker, being released in the UK on the 18th of December. So you may have already seen it by the time you watch this, but premiering in LA on Monday 16th of December. According to the VP for styling from Porsche, Michael Moore, apologies Michael if I butchered your name there, the Tri-Wing concept blends the design elements of the Star Wars universe with current production model Porsches including the 911 and the Taycan. So if they were available, would the fanboy or fangirl within you want one? Let us know in the comments. We try to keep active on our Facebook and Twitter pages, so why not head over there if you're looking to spend some time? And also every Thursday on Twitter, we run the road sign challenge, so if you recognise the road sign and you know what country it's from, leave your guesses in the comments and try and beat our regulars, who are pretty good at it, but you might be better. So let's see how you do. On Sunday we dropped an extended review of the Jaguar XE, so if you're interested in that car do check that video out on our YouTube channel. I know everyone's really busy around Christmas so we are releasing a short review of that car which is going to be dropping on Wednesday. Next week is of course Christmas week but that doesn't mean we're not going to be uploading to the channel. We've got reviews for the Mercedes AMG GT 63 4 door, <laughs> that's a bit of a mouthful, but they're going to be uploaded to the channel next week so make sure you click the notification bell to receive notifications on when our latest videos are coming to the channel and we've also got some really exciting videos coming in the new year so keep an eye on our YouTube channel. Believe it or not, it's been 50 years since Michael Caine told us we were only supposed to blow the bleeding doors off. Yes, we're talking about the original and the best, if you ask me, the Italian job. It's also been 60 years since the first Mini was driven on UK roads. Can you believe it? So the people over at Auto Express decided that it was beyond time to do it all over again and took three modern Minis to Italy and travelled up the Nivolo Pass in the Italian Alps where the fun started. On clear but very windy road, they continued their ascent. The full journey has been recorded for posterity with the team visiting the sites that appear in the iconic film that made the small British car famous across the globe. PSA Group, the parent company for Peugeot, Vauxhall, Citroen and DS has partnered with the largest EV charging point provider in the UK, Podpoint. They will be using the charge provider as their exclusive supplier on the launch of their EVs and plug-in hybrids. They've signed a two-year deal with the company and it will also benefit those who will be charging cars at home as well as fleet users who will charge their vehicles at work. The company is planning to launch their range of EVs in 2020, starting with the Vauxhall E Corsa and the DS3 Crossback E Tents. It's not quite the end of the year yet, but so far the story has been really interesting. According to the SMMT, the top 10 cars of the year are a mix of small cars and SUVs. In 10th place is the Kia Sportage, though the Sportage isn't in the top 10 for November, it's definitely in the top 10 for the year with 32,825 registered in 2019. In ninth place, we have the first of the VWs, the Polo, with 34,738 registrations. In eighth spot is the iconic Mini, now owned by BMW, but forever known as an English car, with 37,203. In seventh place is the first of three Fords, the Cougar, with 38,031 registrations. In 6th spot is the popular Nissan Qashqai, which had 50,014 registrations in 2019. We're now halfway through and in 5th place is the Mercedes-Benz A-Class, the best-selling Mercedes of 2019, which had 50,674 registrations this year. In 4th place is the Ford Focus with 53,338. We're now reaching the top and in 3rd place winning bronze is the Vauxhall Corsa, which reached top of the registration list in the UK in November with 53,637 registrations. In second spot is the second VW in this list, the Volkswagen Golf, with 54,409. And in the top spot, just like last year, is the ever-popular Ford Fiesta, an incredible 73,663 registrations in the UK over 2019. So did your favourite car make it to the top 10 list this year? Let us know in the comments.
As always, be sure to guess the car we're sitting in right now. Unfortunately, as of the time of recording, no one has guessed the car we were sitting in last week, but there's still time, so do go back and revisit that video. If you recognize the interior and exterior shots of that car, let us know down in the comments, and of course, we'll tell you if you've got it right. Don't forget to subscribe to the OSV channel if you haven't done so already. Ring the notification bell to receive notifications on when our latest videos are coming to the channel. And if you're in the market for a new car, maybe you wanna look through leasing options before Christmas, check out our special offers page on our website. Thank you very much for watching the last Behind the Wheel episode of 2019. I hope you have an amazing Christmas and of course, safe driving.